Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. Uh, we got kind of an unusual situation today. We're at a uh, machine shop that's closing down. Uh, the owner, the actual owner that ran this machine shop died long ago. But his relatives and, and the people that are charged with clearing out the building um, are now to a point where they have to clear out the building. And I'm going to just shoot a bunch of video. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you some contact information of the gentleman that's uh, uh, that's in charge of liquidating this entire place. And I'm gonna go as slow as I can through this place and show you as much as I can. If something sparks your interest, give a call. If you're in the area, uh, make an appointment and swing by. You can't just show up here, it's gonna be by appointment only. And uh, you're probably pennies on the dollar for a bunch of this stuff. Uh, they're almost prepared to s start sending this stuff out the door at scrap value. Some machines are in a state of disrepair. Some machines are functional and ready to go. Let's just take a look around, see what kind of tooling, machinery, and things we got in, in store for you. Okay, first up, uh, we've got a pretty large Blanchard grinder here. And it looks to be complete. Uh, condition unknown. We'll just put all these. We're going to just say condition unknown. And it's dark in here, and I apologize. But the motor and the drive and the control panel and everything are on the back. All sales are as is, where is. So it's up to you to haul it out of here, and it's up to you to get it running. But you could probably pick up, pick up a nice Blanchard grinder for a song. Let's take a look and see what else is around here. Steady rest, we got them. And it looks like a roller bearing steady rest there. There's another monster there. I'm gonna put my foot in there. It makes my foot look small. Look at the size of that thing. That's a that's a 13 shoe I just stuck in there. There's another steady rest there. We can get these all rounded up if you want to buy all the steady rests. There's a sizable four jaw chuck. There's a 618 electromagnetic chuck. There is a Delta vertical bandsaw. It looks to have the motor and drive all intact. And when it comes to just stuff, we got just stuff. It's just an old foot pedal. Those are handy though. An old drive motor, start, stop, push button. These are all four jaw and three jaw chuck jaws on that skid. There's another four jaw chuck. Here is a, it looks like an Airco. Oh no, it's a Triarc welder. Pardon my finger. Uh, if you're in the area, it's not a bad idea to just come on out and have a look around. All right, let me shut the camera down and I'm gonna move over to the other side. Okay, we got a pretty big rotary table here. There's my foot in the picture again, size 13. So that thing's a monster. And it's, I'm not sure what that is underneath it. That's not part of it underneath that, the yellow part. But the top part, that definitely is a rotary table with a coolant drip tray. Actually, that might go to the Blanchard grinder. I'd have to, I'd have to dig that out and get a good look at it. That might be the table for the Blanchard grinder. Oh, look, another steady rest. This is a smaller one, though. You guys want a beer? There's my uh I'm okay. No, I'm I'm okay, thanks. There's my foot with it, just so you know the size of it. There's another steady rest. And uh comments uh down below this video of what size these are will be ignored because I have no idea what size they are. You need to contact the gentleman and make an appointment, come out and measure it yourself. Uh next up is a this is a flywheel type uh punch press made by South Bend. Uh, th that's the crankshaft. 
the ram is out of it but the tables there I don't know whether the parts are here or not for the rest of it they might be I believe this is the control for it right here but if you're into the old rotary punch presses there it is here's another uh, here's another unit you might be interested in this is a Boyer Schultz 612 surface grinder spindle sounds good the motor is here all the guards and everything are out off of it there's no chuck on the table but it looks like a good project for someone call them up make them an offer here's a hydraulic press missing the hydraulics there's a hydraulic press frame only that orange thing right there so you've got uh, a hydraulic press frame give it a ram and you got yourself a press okay there's some 90 degree heads now these are either Cincinnati I think the dark green ones are probably Cincinnati uh, this one and this one and I believe this is probably a Kearney Trekker I'm not sure uh, it's up to you to make the call and find out what they are and get them to take any measurements you might need but uh, that's a 90 degree milling head and this and this I believe are 90 degree milling heads and down below are some more chucks a couple more uh, look like four jaw chucks so all you Kearney Trekker and Cincinnati guys out there there's some 90 degree milling heads don't know where they fit don't know anything about them these two here appear to be identical. Next up is a Cosmo, uh, Taiwanese made, 18 by 60 lathe. Uh, appears to be in running condition. Uh, I'm going to say it probably ran when parked. How's that? Uh, the ways on the machine look pretty good. It's dark in here, but this is right over next to the headstock here. They look to be in fair condition. It is a gap bed. That line you see right there is the gap for the gap bed. So that gap will pull out. It has a taper attachment. It has a tail stock. It's using the old KDK uh, tool post. But it's a nice big, uh, nice big solid looking lathe. And it's as is, where is, boys. And now this thing is uh, metric and... Uh, uh, SAE threads and speeds and feeds and this thing literally comes with everything on these tables that are associated with the lathe all this stuff here so that all goes with it and there's, there's more tool holders down there for the KDK there's another one there for the KDK so there's there's a lot more tool holders there and there's just tool bits and all kinds of stuff all over the place here all over the place oh look a steady rest there's another one everywhere I go there's a steady rest somewhere and if you need a steady rest chances are we got one here that will fit your machine okay well we got a horizontal bandsaw and it's uh, it's German made I mean uh, if you can get that name off of there I can't even pronounce it there's your serial numbers and model numbers there if you want to freeze the video and look at those but you've got a pretty unique, uh, looks like a very well-built uh, horizontal bandsaw. Uh, you even get, it looks like you even get belts with it. So pretty nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's post-war, but this thing is built like a tank. That actually looks like a tank right there. Pretty nice. Okay, okay. Here's the rest of those Bridgeport parts. Uh, we got quills. It looks like we got, uh, you know, we got spindles, step belts, draw bars. There's an upper. There's the upper bell housing for for a bridge port. There's a counter shaft, I think, for a bridge port. So they got they got some bridge port parts. If you want to come fish through them, they got them here for you to look at. And see, I'm not sure what that one is. That's, 
That's not that's not a bridge part. It's just she's a generic. Okay, we got a small bench top uh, belt sander, belt grinder. Brand is unknown. The label is that's just a motor tag. So I'm not really sure. If someone knows what brand that belt sander is, throw it in the comments. I know it's really dark back here, but there's a there's an old radial arm saw here. It might be handy for some of you woodchucks out there. It's, it's on a stand and it's got kind of a dust collector back to it. And the uh, condition is unknown. The uh, push button's out of it. That's the control station port there. But radial arm saw, and she's a big one. Looks like about a 14 or 16 inch blade on that thing. Oh look, there's more chucks. So if you guys need some kind of chuck, come on over here and start measuring. I'm not going to go through all these things. That's between you and him. Sandblast cabinet. Already on a pallet. Already ready to put in your truck. And it even comes with a hose. And that looks to be a dust collector right there. So sandblast cabinet and dust collector. It's a side load. That's uh, that's your working area. Sorry it's so dark. I got no electricity in this side of the building. Okay, we got a big uh, abrasive saw. That's probably a 14, 16 inch blade as well. It's up on a stand with a V notch. So it's made for cutting round pipe. And it's got its own angle iron home, home built stand. Make him an offer. Okay, there's H&H &H Wilson. Not really sure what these are. But there's a couple of them. This one says True Trace. That looks like a hydraulic pump or some kind of a stylus or something for a tracing attachment. And uh, here's another one of these fellows down here. So these these might all be tracing attachments. I'm not really sure. Not sure. I've never. I'm not that familiar with tracing attachments. But uh, if you got a tracer, I think we got them. Here's another one down here. Yep. True Trace hydraulic tracer. Here's another one. So we got a whole shelf full of. Uh, uh, tracing stuff. Oh, there's a there's a lead screw. So that's probably another part of the tracing attachment. Okay, there's H and H Wilson. Not really sure what these are, but there's a couple of them. This one says True Trace. That looks like a hydraulic pump or some kind of a stylus or something for a tracing attachment. And uh, here's another one of these fellows down here. So these these might all be tracing attachments. I'm not really sure. Not sure. I've, I've never. I'm not that familiar with tracing attachments, but. Uh, if you got a tracer, I think we got them. Here's another one down here. Yep, true trace, hydraulic tracer. Here's another one. So we got a whole shelf full of uh, uh, tracing stuff. Oh, there's a there's a lead screw. So that's probably another part of the tracing attachment. And it looks like a Morse taper three drilling head. And there's an old school single beam scale there too, for you antique buffs. Here's a really old gas stove oven combo. Kind of a classic. Pretty neat. Brand? That's a push style vise. I think it starts with a P. I just bought one, but I can't for the life of me remember the brand name. There's a whole box of tooling holders. Someone can tell me what that is. Cat 40 maybe. I don't know. Cat 50, Cat 40 tooling. Someone out there can use that. There's a whole bin full of it. Okay, there's a shelf full of goodies for you guys to go through. All kinds of electrical components. There's a radius and tangent dresser. This is an SPI, but it's kind of a small uh, radius and tangent dresser. Yep, works good. Needs a little oil. That'll be uh, good as new. There's another style of radius and tangent dresser. Some of you guys recognize that. So those are those are for both for your surface grinders. There's a couple, there's a couple vacuum pumps right there. There's some kind of hot surface uh, element. All kinds of vintage electronics for, for you to play with and go through. Uh, there's another table full of stuff. Some old lantern tool posts. There's tons of stuff to go through. Here's a little import bench top drill press. They'll probably sell it to you cheap. 
the bench top uh, belt sander disc combo. It's an Inco brand back when Inco was still around. It's an import, but Inco always did quality imports. Pretty nice little Kennedy bottom box. It's got, I've already been through the drawers, there's nothing much good in it. But it's, it's a pretty clean box, it's not all beat to hell. And then there's all kinds of bearings and stuff over there, maybe zoom in. There's a shelf full of bearings you can go through. Just take a lot of them. They're, they're, you get it for scrap value. I don't know how well you can see in there. There's a brand new hydraulic ram and a brand new hydraulic motor in there. So uh, you probably pick through that, take a look at that, and see if you can build something cool out of it. There's a Greenleaf Porta Power and a hydraulic ram. Some Bosch air nailers. Here's a uh, Wisconsin, looks like a four-cycle engine coupled to a motor. Not sure what it is. Looks like some kind of generator or something. Uh, this looks to be a hydraulic test bench. It's, it says Paul Monroe Hydraulics, Los Angeles, California on it. But it looks like to be some kind of a hydraulics test bench. Couple more toolboxes. These have all uh, hydraulics related stuff in them. And they were keeping it next to the hydraulic test bench. There's an old engine hoist. Hydraulic ram. It is not a Harbor Freight. Condition unknown. As is safety where? clean parts washer. There's a shelf full of vintage tools. All the plug-in types. And there's there's a bunch of hydraulic hoses, test hoses that go with the hydraulic unit. Nice little two-sided lapping plate. That thing's a beauty. I might take that for myself. You guys might not get a chance at that. Okay, looks like we got a Sheffield, uh, like a comparator stand electronic, condition unknown. Kind of a neat unit. Heavy, cast iron base, pretty nice. Oh, it's a pig, that's for sure. But there's some electronics with it, if you're into that vintage stuff. Pretty neat. And then this looks to be another type of comparator stand, but it's got the plate. But I think it's a dedicated purpose for doing bearings. Uh, this guy did a lot of uh, ball bearings and stuff here. But we got a couple of uh, metrology plates. There. More bearings and pillow blocks to fish through. Okay, well we got a milling machine. It's got a uh, slotting head in the back, which is a genuine Bridgeport slotting head. Condition unknown. Uh, we got a step pulley head. Looks like we've got a uh, an X auto feed. We got a few vices to go with it, but looks to be a pretty complete uh, milling machine. I'll go out front and see if I can get down and take a look at the ways. Uh, this is some kind of a pump filtration setup. Um, the sticker on it says. Uh, a can engineering portable filter and pumping unit and it's for oil they're out of Kansas City Kansas but it's a kind of a little I think it's like for coolant or something uh, for pumping out coolant and cleaning it and it's on a kind of a portable little cart kind of neat now I'm over on the other side of the milling machine but I can't get over to it there's a bunch of it's just literally a wall of stuff in my way I can't even fish my way through there Yo. But that's it, and that's about as close as I can get to the ways. Doesn't look to be too clapped out. But it's your garden variety Bridgeport milling machine. A few micrometers here. You know, they're in these cases. Pretty rusty. I don't know whether anyone's going to be interested in those. There's some sheer Tomikos. There's some monsters in here, too. 
big old wonkers there. You're welcome to dig through them if you come out. Snap on toolbox, vintage snap on toolbox. I bet he just made his last payment on that to the snap on truck. Okay, we got a hydro hydraulic table. <laughs> Uh, pretty nice. The surface plate is not for sale. That's already uh, taken. But uh, that is a hydraulic table that lifts up and down and it works. Pretty sweet. Make them an offer. Okay guys, I went through as much as I could in this place. I'd like to introduce you to Adrian. Uh, and he's going to be your main contact for any of this stuff. It's all by appointment. If you want to uh, talk about a specific piece, he can uh, you know dig it out for you, whatever. If you want to just come and look, make an appointment. We don't want any looky-loos. We don't want people wasting his time coming over here for an hour <laughs> and uh, spending uh, $2. You know, it, you got to make it worth his while. So if you want to come over here and uh, peruse around, buy some buy some vintage machinery. You know, a lot well, to go through. Well, there is a lot to go through. This is a big place, and there's a lot of... Uh, it's been neglected for over 10 years. Adrian, what's your cell number? How do they get a hold of you? Uh, 909 four five zero nine three eight four okay nine zero nine four five zero nine three eight four okay well i sure appreciate you showing me around and letting me poke through all your stuff i got a little pile of stuff that i collected <laughs> and uh, we're going to get this video posted tonight i'm going to let it run for a couple weeks uh, i'm going to exchange numbers here with adrian so that when i know the building's clear i'm going to pull the video down so people don't keep bothering him but uh you guys uh if you've got inquiries if you want to maybe coordinate with Summer Bash, maybe I can come over here and grab something for you. Hold it at my house until you get to Summer Bash to pick it up. Uh, we'll work something out, all right? Uh, but I appreciate you guys watching and uh, uh, give him your best price. Thank you. Thanks.